Our next question from us is from Jung Tui To Jungler from High Fong Jungling Theater. Uh, let me read the question for you. Hello, Supreme Master Xinghai. I'm a regular viewer of Supreme Master Television. I'm touched by your noble deeds for the world and all beings. I would like to ask, the Supreme Master Xinghai International Association has activities worldwide, especially in curbing global warming, and has the support of many people and governments. Why is it not officially operating in our lives? Uh, maybe it will be, yes. Yes, everything changes all the time. Political situation changes, people change, planetary change, you know, uh, moral standard change, humanity change for better, everything changes all the time. Uh, this question, perhaps it's just temporarily. In the future, we don't even need to ask these questions. Or even if we do, uh, the whole world is our home. So if we do not have a chance to operate in this little room, we will have a chance to operate in another room. <laughs> yes, but, you know, uh, we are doing something in our lab all the time. Uh, our association members there uh, spread the SOS global warming, and uh, they go about planting trees in many barren areas with the government's uh, support and the officials' recognitions. We also do uh, much uh, disaster relief there with also the government support and endorsement and help, you know, with transportation and uh, guiding and uh, helping us to find the victims or which victims are the most in need, etc., etc. So maybe we're not fully officially uh, operating in our lack of Vietnam, but we are operating nevertheless, okay? And uh, everything will change all the time. Yes. Anyway, I'm very glad that some Vietnamese people can come here to Thailand to participate in this event, this uh, meaningful, organized, global saving event. So that shows that Vietnam is a free country. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, there perhaps there's not enough facilities in Vietnam for now, but in the future, there will be. Hmm? The whole world will change. The whole world will change. And one more thing I have to say, yes, that the Vietnamese, they even in the World Trade Organization, which is an honor and privilege and an advantage for Vietnam. And many countries in the world are sending representatives, head of state, leaders of organizations to Vietnam to visit, to exchange policy, to exchange ideas, to help Vietnam or to learn from Vietnam. I'm very happy with the progress in Vietnam. So that is some good point, and we look for the positive all the time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Master. So the next question is of our panel. Uh, it's for Dr. Nguyen Thong Yen from Nguyen Dac Hui. Presently, many people uh, lack, uh, lack information or haven't yet uh, realized um, the seriousness of global warming. They also think that it's a reality that cannot be answered, and uh, they just let it be. As a scientist specializing in changing weather patterns, could you please let us know uh, the effect of uh, global warming on all of Vietnam in particular and another country in the region in the coming years? And what is your message 
to those who are not concerned about human survivals. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you for the question. The problem is that uh, the people are not aware of the global warming and climate change disaster that will come. And the people in the scientific community said that no matter how we do the reduction of greenhouse gases, the global warming will continue in the next century and also in the future. So the problem is now is to bring the awareness to the people. It's what we are doing, we are beginning to do, because the global warming problem is known very recently, some decades back. And having a vegetarian diet to fight against climate change is also very recent. And we begin to propagate the idea of eating less meat, eating no meat, is a way to fight against climate change. Right. The problem in our country is the same as in other developing countries. Our country would be one of the most affected by climate change. According to a World Bank report in 2007, our country will be among the five countries the most affected by sea level rise. And you see that when the sea level rise about what? one meter above the level now, then you are among these five countries, our country will be the most affected, except two. One is for the agricultural land flooded. We will be second place after Egypt. And the total land to be flooded by one meter rise of C11, we will be second after one of the islands, the Manifest, something like that. But in all other uh, domains like uh, the uh, diminution of the GDP, the diminution of land, we are, will be classed first. So the problem is very urgent. Yes. And as uh, other countries, if the sea level rise above one meter, our country will lose 5 million tons of rice every year because of the loss of land for agriculture and also because of the intrusion of the water far into the land. Now, what have we done in our country? Uh, I have to say that uh, we are very uh, behind what is done in other countries, especially we are much behind Bangladesh, for example, Bangladesh is a country which is also menaced by the sea level rise. But the official authorities have been very active recently. They have founded what is called the NAPA, the National Adaptation Program of Action, that consider every domain of human activities like agriculture, industry, and so on. Everyone has to sit together to find a way, first, to adapt to the climate change, and second, to find a way to mitigate the causes of uh, climate change. And now, your question is about how the scientists can do. I think what we can do is to tell people to think positive and act positive by eating less meat, eating no meat. <laughs> we have to do everything. First, to reduce the consumption of fossil fuel because it is one of the cause of CO2 emission. But recently, 
people found that a very, very good way to reduce the greenhouse gases is to reduce the livestock sector. And the livestock sector reduction of uh, gas emission can be forced upon by the consumers. If the consumers don't eat meat or eat less meat, then we can have a very good effect. While the reduction of fossil fuel is very difficult, but the vegetarian diet is a better way, a way that the individual can take. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Bravo, doctor. Bravo. Next question for Master is from Tan Bin, Chio traditional <laughs> opera artist who is absent today, Master, so I'm simply going to read this uh, for him. All right, please. Hello, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Thank you for your devoted efforts to the world. I'm so happy and believe in the bright prospect of the planet when all of humankind adopts a vegan diet. I have a question as follows. In addition to the solution, Be Veg, Go Green, which you have compassionately launched, is there any other effective solution to help reduce and stop emissions so that our planet could return to its original green, clean, and beautiful state and end global warming? Please tell him that I thank him for his positive vision and hope that he always uphold it as a torchlight for others. As far as uh, effective solutions to global warming, if there is another solution as nearly effective, I would have shared it already. Since I also live on this planet, I also worry about our planet. So if there's anything better or as good as the uh, VESH solution, I would have been glad to announce it. So actually, the Be Veg Go Green message sums up the best solutions, so it's easy to remember. But it says a lot, because being veg, meaning no animal products, can stop 80% of global warming, 80% by our own doing. No protocol, no difficulty, no tax, nothing to pay. This being veg practice will stop 80% of global warming and almost immediately. Therefore, it is most effective. We just need more people to join the vegan and compassionate circle to make it work. It's the most urgent, time-sensitive solution, in addition to allowing us time to even begin all other solutions. Because we stop 80% of global warming and the remaining 20%, either nature will then be strong enough to take care of herself, or we can work on it by going green. Going green encompasses many solutions within it. There is the individual level. We can be frugal and save electricity and water. Companies can make their products in an eco-friendly way, like without plastic less packaging, etc. And governments can have the time to install green technology like solar and wind energy, wave power, so on and so forth, and share these uh, with other countries. So first, we have to be veg. Second, go green. Then we can save the planet. First, be veg. Hmm? And then we have time to go green. One supportive solution is do good. Doing good deeds for our families, our friends, strangers, and society at large. This will generate positive, beneficial, benevolent energy to help us to deal with negative, dark, menacing energy that is causing disaster and trouble, disease, suffering for our planet. Only the positive energy can cancel the negative energy. There's no other way. Your work as an opera artist is also helping 
because you not only entertain people, but you remind people of many virtues through the operas, you know, through the script and your act. In addition, we can also pray to heaven for protection and mercy and pray that all beings may be safe and have a brighter future. All these, be veg, go green, do good and pray, together will be a formula to generate incredible, constructive, positive, loving energy. It will be very powerful to counter the disastrous energy that is almost enveloping our planet. In the end, it is this wonderful, powerful energy that will save our world. Thank you, Mr. Tan. I'm also a fan of yours. <laughs> we'll have to tell him that. <laughs> yes, please tell him. <laughs> Thank you. Next question for Master is from Rewadi Uka Watanakrawi. สวัสดีค่ะท่านอาจารย์ขอบคุณที่ท่านอาจารย์ให้โอกาสพวกเราพี่น้องชาวไทยกับเวียดนามมาพบกันอีกครั้งหนึ่งและประเทศต่างๆ
there will be consequences according to the killing action. It's stated very clearly in the Lankavatara Sutra. The Buddha said, Meat eaters have so many countless offenses. Thus, vegetarians have masses of countless merits and virtues. So, these merits and virtues of a vegan diet are the best strength anyone or any country could have in this time of crisis. If we want life for ourselves and for our planet, we would heed this wisdom and get rid of the meat diet. I pray that Thailand will also return to her original, glorious, noble way of life. May the Buddhas bless you all, your country, Thai people. Thank you, Kun Ying. Thank you for being there. Next question for Master is from Rung Napa Thirajaran Sakun. He's a gift shop owner and vegetarian. Also vegetarian. Wow. <laughs> อยากถามอาจารย์ว่าไข้หวัดปี 2009 <laughs> That is the swine flu. It is very sad, very deadly, every day. How it will be halted? Yes, I do share your concern about this tragic, painful, frightening situation that we have gotten into, but it's our own making. The so-called swine flu is very frightening because we are told it is likely to get worse and more widespread and more deadly. To remind us, I will share a few recent findings from the researchers and the World Health Organization. Firstly, swine flu is unprecedentedly the fastest growing pandemic we have ever seen. Imagine, and we have seen so many, we have known so many in the past. It became a pandemic in just two months. Previously, Similar deadly flu viruses took at least half a year to spread globally. And we have heard so many bad ones already. But this swine flu is likely to infect 2 billion people. That is, one in every three person in the world over two years be infected. We are already close to 2,000 officially counted fatalities and there could be thousands more without a vaccine. But even the vaccine is not completely reliable. We hear of death case every day, every day, officially only, unofficially, we would never be able to know. First, the supply for everyone is sorely inadequate. The vaccine. We don't have enough vaccine. Next, the virus, in some cases, was completely resistant to the vaccine, even. The vaccine did not help at all. And now some British researchers said that the vaccine might not be much help for the children who are in the most vulnerable group. Isn't that frightening and sad? If you have children, I'm sure you worry day and night. Many countries are prepared to close schools, or already close schools, prepared to close school completely even. Every school in the country to stop the spread of the disease or to minimize the risk for the children. Some developed countries even, like France. So how can we stop this unfolding terrifying nightmare? You ask, the only way to halt it is to make sure it can never happen again in the first place. There is no more animal raising. Stop the virus at its source 
which is precisely at the utterly inhumane, filthy, cramped, hot soil, bacteria-infested pig farm. Pig farms are the source of swine flu. We have to stop pig farming. We have to stop the place where the swine flu originated and spread and mutated and become worse and worse every day for us. Thus, the root cause of the swine flu virus is our cruel meat-eating habit that makes us a very cruel being and not very dignified as that. As long as meat industry continues, such viruses will continue to be born. After this one, we will have the next and the next and the next and the next, and one of them will be even worse than we can imagine now, and more deadly, as the experts have warned us long ago. The animal farms must be closed, and to do that, we must be vegan. By the way, the swine flu is by far not the only scary disease that also comes from or is spread by humans' cruel treatment of animals. Avian flu, tuberculosis, listeria, Crohn's disease, mad cow disease, Campylobacter, Staphylococcus aureus, etc., etc., and now we have its more dangerous form called MRSA namely methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It's a superbug, meaning there is no antibiotic to cure it, no antibiotic for this superbug. We have it now in our world, and its likely source is because we fed the animals too many antibiotics. So this disease arose because we overbreed animals and create the conditions for the disease to form and spread. Other disease came from hunting, another cruelty committed on the poor animals. HIV, the killer of 25 million people since 1981, is from humans' consumption of primates. And just recently, as you know from the news, people in China are dying from the pneumonic plague, which originated from hunting mammoths for food. It's very contagious and can kill a victim within 24 hours. So, all these diseases, not just the swine flu, could be prevented if only humans turn away from such unhealthy, cruel, violent habits, the habits of raising, hunting, and eating animal flesh. It has to be stopped, the consuming of animal flesh. Thank you for asking this very heart-wrenching question. Thank you, Master. The next question is for Dr. At Ong Chum Sai Na Ayutthaya from Mr. Brapan Wad, Publication Department of Amarin Printing and Publishing. Uh, he is absent today, so I'll read the questions for you. In the big picture, global warming seems too large scale and far fetched. Can you give a more close to home examples of impact of global warming? so that people can realize how serious it is and how can we take part in alleviating this problem? Well, there's a big problem with the imbalance in the, the world because the rising sea, it's rising up all the time. We have more weight in the Pacific Ocean more so than on the other side of the world. And because of this, 
there is an imbalance in the world. The world is going around like a top in space, moving around the axis, and it's steady, it's peaceful, but then we start to increase the weight on one side more than the other. So it's just when you play a top, you spin the top, normally the top will spin on its axis steadily, but suppose we put a little bit of clay on one side of the top and then try to spin it again, this time it will start to wobble. It will no longer spin on its original axis. So is the world. We are going to have a lot of problems because of this unbalance and it's possible the worst scenario is that it will suddenly change the axis of rotation. This has happened before in our world in the past. The North Pole has not always been where it is. It has changed in the past um, because the world uh, became hot when we got closer to the sun. Sometimes we are further away from the sun, so we got the ice age. So uh, there's a lot of imbalance and many times there's a change in the axis of the rotation of the world. Well, that is the worst scenario that could happen. But also, uh, because of the imbalance in the weight around the world, uh, the, the earth crust is also moving. And because the earth crust is moving, we're going to get more earthquakes. We're going to get more tsunamis. We're going to have a lot of problems uh, because uh, when you have tsunamis, big waves are going into the shores of various countries. It's very destructive. So these are some of the uh, worst examples that could happen in the very near future uh, because of the global warming effect. Thank you. Good answer, Doctor. Good answer. Next question for Master is from Huang Kim Than. Yes. Kính chào anh Hoàng Kim Than. Kính thưa sư phụ, con xin thầy tâm ký xin ngài giải đáp dùm con câu hỏi sau ạ. Vai trò của giới trẻ trong công cuộc cứu vãn địa cầu là gì? Ngài có lời nhắn nhủ hay đề xuất nào để gợi hứng khởi hứng khởi cho thanh niên hành động tích cực hơn trong vấn đề bảo vệ môi trường hay không? Yes. Good question. You see, the young people have a very important role in saving the planet. They are our future. They are at the peak of their energy and idealism. They love justice for people and animals and willingly help when given a chance. They are perceptive and open to new ideas, to what is logical and practical at that moment rather than being used to the established way of things all the time. So their age group is often the one who tries to be vegetarian to help animals and the environment, which is excellent. The young people have this flexibility that we need right now to react quickly to the emergency of our planet. So their role today is one of action, and leading society by their sincere example. Like uh, last year there was a young teenager who invented a new water purifying technology that could turn polluted household wastewater into pure clean water before even reaching the drain. Very gentle on the environment and the animals, not to mention humans. And it only costs about six dollars to make. That's remarkable. He won first place out of thousands of inventors in an international contest in Sweden. Of course, like all of us, the young people sometimes are too busy in their daily lives to study or spend time with their friends or their hobbies. 
but it seems that given a chance and information, the young people would understand clearly that is not just the environment, but the people and the animals, including themselves, who are in danger right now due to climate change. They will be even more inspired when they know they have the power to do something about it. And now, but they must take time to inform themselves or be informed also. The best thing they can do to protect the environment is to be veg. I can never emphasize it enough. Very easy, yet very, very powerful solution, being veg. So the youth have a heroic mission right now to help save the world, just to be veg and spread the information to other youth and other people. Thank you, Hoàng Kim Thanh. Next question for Master is from Boi Wang Wan, uh, IT staff. Con xin kính chào sư phụ. Chào anh, chào anh Bùi, anh Huân. <laughs> Con rất là vui khi được nhìn thấy sư phụ hôm nay. Dear Master, our inhabitants and human kinds are being affected by global warming. So, do those animal friends ever praise for the God's grace to help save the planet? And what roles do they play in coping global warming? Thank you, Master. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you asked this question as uh, it expresses regard for our animal friends. The animals indeed have very important roles just by being here on our planet. Your first question, I will answer, that most animals are in touch with God's grace already at every moment of their lives here on earth. They bring to our planet this divine grace and love, the power of love in its purest form, they are here to help the planet become more elevated. So in a way, their presence itself is like a prayer being answered because they bring the blessings through them from the divine to which they are so near. So much uh, more the reason they deserve our respect and protection. The animals are truly noble, gentle beings, selfless, and in harmony with one another, the environment, and with heaven. Their role has always been since time immemorial, that is, to bring love and blessing to the world with their pure presence. Even in the physical aspect, scientists have shown time and again how each and every species fulfill a valuable role in nature. They keep the ecosystems in balance. Every pond, every forest, every desert, and the air and the oceans all around us are in balance, thanks to the plants and animals working together to make it so and keep it so. They are also humans' helpers, our companions. If we would only stop harming and torturing them and killing them and give them a chance to fulfill their God-given mission, then our planet will be saved and will be kept in splendor. So in answer to your second question, Mr. Boy, about their role in global warming, they are, by their presence, helping our Earth as much as possible. However, global warming and climate change, even the war and disasters, are humans' doings, and they know it is up to humans to change their destructive course and return to being peaceful dwellers of this planet. They wait on the sidelines in full support of humans. For the day, they can be our friends again, truly, not our victims. On that day of peacemaking between humans and animals, 
our eyes may begin to be opened to our co-inhabitants' true magnificent roles on earth. Thank you, Huang. Thank you, Master. Cảm ơn, ha. Cảm ơn, Giêu. Next question from Master is from Tassani Tantuma Road, employee of an electronics company. Hello, Master. Hello. Welcome. Uh, thank you for holding this seminar in Thailand. For how long can our recent activities to elevate global warming postpone to deadline? Or have they already stopped the disaster that are supposed to happen in the next three years? Mr. Tantum Maroj, thank you for your concern for our planet's future. Your concern is everybody else's concern, and it is my concern too. It is true that our efforts to alleviate global warming in the recent few years helped to postpone already the deadline, somehow, somewhat, for some time. Not so long ago, we only had about two years before we faced the point of no return. Then, as more and more people put in effort, namely by switching to a vegan diet with a wish to help the planet, this powerful wish helps, and this powerful action helps. So time was added because of each one's great positive energy through this compassionate diet and well wish until we had an extension of about four years now. Of course, this is also heaven's great merciful grace for giving us this second chance. The deadline, however, does not get postponed forever. In fact, every day on Supreme Master Television, there is a countdown of how many days we have left to change before it is too late. Today is day 1,257. We can still save a great part of our population if we become vegan. Now, thanks to the millions of people who have become vegetarian or vegan recently, already some of the disasters that were already at our doorsteps were mitigated or in some cases even dissolved completely. But you see, uh, even so, we must still continue to spread the urgent message and encourage those around us and our governments and the media to help to spread the organic vegan solution. I want to plead with everybody, with everyone in power, with every media agency, every reporter, everyone that has power, everyone that has some power, everyone who is ordinary citizens, please be veg to save our planet. Everything else will go along fine. We will have time to implement other solution, which is not as urgent as stopping the killing of animals for meat, because it is meat that is threatening our planet existence. It is meat that caused the global warming. So we have to stop the cause of global warming and the cause of destruction to our planet. That is meat industry. Meat, fish, dairy, these are the killer of our planet and the killer of our children, the killer of our future generation. If we do not heed the scientists' warning and all the evidence and become veg, then more disaster will keep on coming. One may be worse than another. Maybe we will not be able to cope. Now, if we look around, we can see the growing frequencies and strength of disasters everywhere. Flood events worldwide are now three times higher 
than in the 80s. In 2008, there were 40 Category 5 storms, the most ever recorded, including the Atlantic, India, and Bangladesh, and in the Philippines. It takes just one Category 4 or 5 storm to destroy a major city, just one. What's more? We have more reports of unending drought, freezing weather, storms and animal species, and even plant and tree species slipping away faster and faster because they are unable to withstand the global warming consequences. These are truly almost always the consequences of humans' violent actions. The number one action is meat-eating. So we are... Grateful we have a few more days to help more of our fellow world citizens to change to the benevolent diet to save our planet. But, you know, these days are still numbered. We can't prolong forever. We can stop the disasters, make them go away for good, forever. Make all the unfavorable disease situations threatening whether to go away, if all of us switch to the organic vegan diet. Pray it be so. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. The next question is for panelists. Dr. Min Gale from Deng Thai Men Jiao, Public Surveillance for Government. Dear, dear Dr. Min Gale, Recently, some governments have to take some important decisions regarding GMO food, like the EU and USA, for instance. What is your opinion regarding GMO food? And um, what do you advise us to do to prevent the GMO industry from expanding? Thank you. Thank you for your question. I think that is the big question. And so it's um, difficult to answer. Uh, but um, from the nutrition point of view, uh, the more nature, the more happiness. Uh, so if uh, you ask me to give community an advice, I think the advice is that uh, Please choose the, um, more and more the natural food in your meal and least processed food as much as possible. I think that's also the way to prevent disease. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Very good, doctor. Very good. Thank you. Next question for Master is from Nguyen Van Tien, chef of a vegetarian restaurant. Hi there. <laughs> Chào ông Tiến. Kính thưa sư phụ, được hồng ân của ngài. Hôm nay được hội tù về đây. À, chúng con và tất cả quan khách được ở trong một mái nhà thân thương để nói lên những sự tầm quan trọng. Thì chúng con xin phép ngài. À, Thông điệp của Sư Phụ gọi tới những nhà lãnh đạo đất nước, các tổ chức, cá nhân cũng như toàn nhân loại vào thời điểm khẩn cấp này là gì ạ? Kính thưa Cám Sư Phụ. Cảm ơn bác. Yes, Mr. Nguyen. My message is the same as I have spoken all along during this time together. Uh, to sum up, to all the leaders, I call on them once more to put their love first for their countrymen and women and for all the children to accept with courage the deed that must be done to use the mighty power in their hand and trust it by people to save the world. The global livestock industry is now contributing almost about as much to global warmings 
as the energy sector or even more. And I know it contributes at least 80% of it. Meat production is depleting your people's water, damaging their health, pushing them to war and breeding new deadly disease each day. It's killing your people. Only you can stop it. They need your shining, heroic, vegan example because they really look to their governments, to their leaders. They would be greatly facilitated by your laws for organic vegan farming and campaigns or laws to make the much-needed lifestyle vegan change. Your co-citizens, your subjects, will appreciate you, praise you, love you, support you, and they will remember you for saving the world for generations to come even, for saving their lives and the lives of their loved ones as well as their future children. And heaven will reward you greatly. Let the wage change. Promote forgiveness and peace. And then even all other troubles like poverty, conflict, even financial crisis, pandemic will also subside. I thank you, leaders of nations, for all the efforts in this direction so far. But if you allow me, I honestly say that what we are doing and planning now is not enough and not fast enough. And I bid you the courage and faith to do more and faster. To the organizations of the world, including the media, who understand the strength of a social movement, Thank you for your work to inform and encourage people to the exciting, humane, beneficial, chic, animal-free, the vegan way of life. To the individuals, thank you for doing your part to save our planet. But please, to make it in time, we have more to do and we have little time. We have to continue to urge our leaders and our fellow human beings, neighbors, to change, be vegan, to save themselves and their families and children and the animals and everything they feel is worth living for. We can get out of the danger, but through the right direction. Our house is on fire, but the water hose is right there in front of us. Just pick it up and use it. It's as simple as that. Just be vegan. And please be quick. Our days are numbered. To all humankind, heaven loves you so much. So we have hope for the planet's survival. More than ever before, we shall awaken to a new, compassionate, vegan planet that is full of loving energy, kindness, and blessings, no end from heaven. I pray you all will continue towards this peace in our reach. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. We turn now to our expert uh, panel for a question. Uh, Dr. Chemnyern Vort Varat Chepan will answer a question from Stephanie Adam, Community Development Advocacy Worker. Thailand and Orlac, or Vietnam, are situated in the Mekong River Valley, which is foreseen to have a lot of bad effects by global warming. According to you, in what ways can these two countries collaborate to deal with issues of global warming while waiting for the global communities to act together? Well, thank you so much for your questions. Well, environment has no boundaries. Climate change also has no boundaries. Whatever people in Vietnam are suffering, the Thais also are suffering. So that means that uh, by working together and sharing of information, that's one of the basic things that we can do 
second thing is how to prepare in order to cope with the impacts of the climate change. Consider that's sort of very important. I have been working in the Asia Pacific region uh, regarding the preparedness uh, the disasters, the preparedness in Asia. I consider that Vietnam one of the most prepared, you know, in the region, right? So I think that the uh, whether in terms of the information collecting and also identifying the critical or the hot spots where the impacts of the climate change are occur, particularly in the delta of the Mekong River. And I think that we should have the exchange in these practices, you know, and I think that the government and as well as the people and the, at the community level should learn and should share between these two countries. I totally uh, agree, you know, with the, um, as I mentioned earlier, BVAC, right? But there's still a lot of exchange, import, and export of meat between the two borders, Thai and Vietnam. Please stop eating meat. And after that, the people will not export the meat, you know, to Vietnam. Okay, so I think that this is considered as a very important. We should be realistic, and some, you know, of the export of the meat are considered as illegal practices, and so we should stop that. Thank you. Could I take opportunity in order to ask the master a little bit? Please. Thank you so much. You are considered for us one of the prominent spiritual leaders in the world. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And I consider that you have powers and strength of yourself and also your association. I would like you to spread out these challenging paths in order to stop or in order to reduce or in order to avoid the destruction of this planet to uh, these groups. One is that the International Panel on the Climate Change is going to meet at the end of the year in uh, Copenhagen. Yes. If possible, I would like you to make another site meeting and spread out this spiritual site of the message to the climate change. Because on the spiritual aspect, Right, it's a very little talk about. Yes. And as I said in my presentation, they overemphasize on the economic instrument and other technological instrument, not from within, as you always say. So I think this is a very mm. great challenging, and I think that you can do it <laughs> with your own strength and your own power. Wow. Second wow. group, right? I would like you to spread these challenge and warnings to the industrialists. They are the great polluters in the world, and they are not here in this room, and they have to pollute the world and carry on right, in order to destroy our planet. So I think that you have a chance to do it. Please do so. Third group, that's a really for the young children. I understand that you love children, and I would like to have really a solid practical program for the children of the earth in this world in order to learn, in order to know more, to be less materialistic, but to be more spiritual. And this aspect right. could be more sustainable. Thank you so much. That's right, sir. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir, for entrusting us with such a very, I would say, heavy but a noble mission. The association friends and I myself are trying our best. In fact, I'm working day and night, and many of us are working day and night, even in my sleep, in my meal time, my time with my dogs. I think of nothing else. I'm working for nothing else but to uh, join you in saving the world and the people. Concerning the government and the industrial, 
uh, company and the press, I'm writing to them. I have been writing to them, and I'm still writing to them to inform them of the urgency of our climate as well as the practical, simple, easy solution. Concerning the spiritual aspect of our uh, standard of the world, I trust that Jesus has taught us a lot. Buddha has led us into a compassionate way of living. Uh, Prophet Muhammad have instructed his people in a wise way of living, compassionate way of living, the Jain master, the Sikh master, etc., etc. We have had so many spiritual teachings. We all have to just put them into practice, like love thy neighbor, yes, animals are our friend, be compassionate to all beings. All main religious doctrine have taught us already this. I myself, I am doing my part and request my uh, association members to do their part. And we're doing our best and we're praying also with our heartfelt love for all people because they are just not informed. Just like many of us, before becoming vegetarian, we were not informed. Therefore, I have nothing but love and compassion for people and, of course, for the animals who suffer so much. And because of their suffering, we reap the suffering in return. But you see, doctor, I have to speak in a neutral way. So many religious groups and leaders have already told people to do good. And so many religious scriptures have already taught us. I only teach the persons who come to my place and ask for spiritual guidance. Or in some occasion when I go out to lecture. The rest of the time, right now, I'm only telling people general guideline to save the planet because this is urgent. And even in saving the planet, being veg, this is also the basis of a spiritual moral and virtue. If a person who tried to be vegetarian to save himself, to save his children, family, and to save the world, then he is a very spiritual, noble-oriented person. I have no wish to even take him into my circle to be my students or anything of the sort. I only wish him or her to be morally fit as a human being, as a dignified, civilized, intelligent, loving human beings to one another by sacrificing whatever necessary to save other beings. In this case, we don't sacrifice much. We just switch a piece of meat to another piece of vegetable protein. I think the sacrifice is very minimum and is maximum worthwhile. So in this case, if the whole planet people turn into this kind of virtuous, compassionate living, then I think they are the best Buddhists, they are the best Christian, they are the best Muslim, they are the best Jainists, they are the best Sikh, they are the best Baha'is in whatever religions or in whatever school of faith that they belong to. Because actually they're all the same, all the faith, all the religions say the same thing. It's just we miss the point. We must study our religious scriptures again and pick out the point. That is useful for our planet right now. That is be compassionate. That is treat all beings with respect according to all the religious scriptures and God's will. So uh, in that case, you see, they don't even have me to teach them. They teach themselves. And they just stay where they are with their religious faith and just exercise the teaching of their own religious doctrine. 
that will be very good for our planet right now. You see, as for spiritual teaching, that is spiritual enough for me. Our association are just a small group, and we are just practicing <laughs> what the religious teacher taught us. Yes, and we uh, put it into practice, and also, of course, we get in touch with our own loving divine power by just some simple technique. Scientifically, everything has a technique and has a way. But if people just be veg and adhere to their religious teaching, which is compassionate lifestyle, dignified status of the children of God or the Buddha's son and daughters, then we are fine spiritually. Concerning the children, sir, if the parents are well grounded in a spiritual basis, as I have just mentioned right now, then the children will follow and they will have a chance to live a virtuous life and also consequently saving our planet. And the third group, the industry sectors, is exists because the demand of people. We demand, so they make. So if we stop demanding something which we think are not conducive to our global survival, then the industry will stop to exist also. But nevertheless, I write to these people, the industry people as well as government and media, as much as in my power, yes, and my time allow. And I also plead with other people to, to please write to the government, the media, and industry uh, group as well, and write to the farmers, explain to them. This I have talked a long time ago also already, that we should contact the farmers, for example, the animal farmers, and explain to them our dye situation and offer them the alternative way of life. They can switch to uh, planting organic vegetable, not just vegetable. Organic is even better, of course, because organic farming absorbs 40% of the CO2 in the air. So before we stop our industry or uh, making a new invention, organic farming is already a saver of our planet. And then if we stop meat eating as well, and all the uh, animals raising industry stopped, and then we save uh, more from CO2 as well, not to talk about methane. So organic farming is our saver. So we have to stop demanding meat, then the meat industry will cease. We cannot blame meat industry people if we continue to consume meat. We cannot blame drug dealers alcohol makers, cigarette uh, producer. We cannot even blame the consumers of these deadly substances if we ourselves could not even leave that piece of meat and become vegetarian, which is much easier than stop the addiction of drug, and stop the addiction of cigarette, or stop addiction of alcohol. So we ourselves have to be the example. If we want all the bad industry to stop, we have to stop the demand of it. Thank you so much, sir. You are very, very concerned like a father. I am very touched. Some of the tragic tolls of addictive drug abuse. Over 200,000 deaths each year. Costs of 181 billion U.S. dollars each year in the United States. 33 billion U.S. dollars in the U.K. Lifetime cost of current drug addiction amounts to 575 billion U.S. dollars in the U.K. Harmful effects, brain damage, stroke, heart disease, liver disease, tuberculosis, emphysema, cancer, depression, suicide, permanent memory loss, mental illness, higher infant mortality, increased crime and violence, impotence. Crime and violence, 
Illegal drugs are a factor in 50% of burglaries in the United Kingdom each year. In the U.S., 60% of people arrested each year have been taking illegal drugs. 650 heroin addicts in the U.S. committed 70,000 crimes in a three-month period. Social costs. U.S. businesses lose 100 billion U.S. dollars per year due to employees' drug and alcohol abuse. Australians pay 53 billion U.S. dollars per year for health care, law enforcement, and lost productivity of drug users. Environmental costs. Every gram of cocaine produced destroys 4.4 square meters of rainforest, with 300,000 hectares of rainforest lost each year to cocaine production. Death. 52 people die each day due to drugs in the U.S. In Canada, substance abuse is attributed to 21% of total deaths and 23% of potential life years lost due to early mortalities. Plus more. Some of the tragic tolls of tobacco. 5.4 million smoking-related deaths per year worldwide. Cost of smoking-related illnesses. 96 billion U.S. dollars in the United States alone. Light and mild cigarettes just as harmful. Causes cancer and diseases in animal companions. Speeds the aging process. Toxic residues of third-hand smoke. Heart disease. Coronary thrombosis, cerebral thrombosis, kidney failure. Cancer, mouth, liver, breast, and colorectal cancer. Lung cancer, esophagus cancer, kidneys cancer, bladder cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, bronchitis. Stroke, impotence, additional harms for secondhand smoking. Childhood arteriosclerosis leading to heart attacks and strokes in adulthood. Sudden infant death syndrome. Infertility, miscarriages and premature deliveries. Childhood asthma, bronchitis, ear infection, cleft lip or palate. Hyperactivity and aggression in asthmatic boys. Circulatory problems in women. Plus more. Some of the tragic tolls of alcohol. 2.3 million alcohol-related deaths per year worldwide. Cost of alcohol-related illnesses. 186.4 billion U.S. dollars in the United States. Up to 210 to 665 billion U.S. dollars globally. Disease. Higher amounts of alcohol increase the cancer risk. Even half a glass of wine daily increases the risk of mouth or throat cancer by 168 percent. Cancer of the liver, breast, colon, esophagus, rectum. Liver disease. Cardiovascular disease. Metal toxicity. Brain damage. Amnesia and dementia. Brain shrinkage. Organ failure. Heart, liver, kidneys, stomach, pancreas, eyes. Birth defects. Children afflicted by anxiety and depression. Mental retardation, fetal alcohol syndrome, stunted growth, facial deformity, sudden infant death syndrome, miscarriage. Alcohol-related violence. Child abuse, 50% of cases. Violence toward loved ones, 30% of cases. Violent acts, 40 to 80 percent of cases. Suicides, 20 to 50 percent of cases. Plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. Our next question for Master is from Dr. At Ong Shumsai Na Yes, welcome, Doctor. Uh, dear Supreme Master Ching Hai, in the year 2012, many people, be it monks or famous peoples, have predicted that there will be the most serious disaster on the planet. May I ask you, uh, Supreme Master, what will happen in the year 2012? Ah. Doctor, 
at Ong Chumsai. <laughs> Thanks for being with us again. Thanks for blessing us with your pleasant, happy, fatherly presence. And thank you for uh, your wonderful uh, speech, you know, your wonderful lecture earlier on. I watched and was very amazed at your knowledge and your dedication. And thank you also for being vegetarian as well. You are a hero. Yes. Concerning your question, as a NASA scientist, even former NASA scientist, with your senior year now, I'm sure you can guess already the answer. Mm, no need for the monks to predict, or no need for me to have any predictions, if I have any prediction at all. Sir, we are in trouble. We are in very deep trouble and in perilous state. And our fate is in our hand. Our fate is in the hands of every person on this planet. Every person on this planet can decide what will happen on the year 2012. Can you imagine how powerful we are? Only if we use our power to stop the disaster that is looming large in front of us. Uh, we have no need for any crystal ball, any psychic power or future fortune-telling ability to see this. All the evidence all these years or these decades have told us clearly that we are in danger. And luckily, all the evidence also offer us a solution. Regardless of religions, regardless of political direction, regardless of parties, regardless of industry, regardless of all the theologies, we can unite in the heart to save our only planet. It's very simple, to stop the cause of destruction of our planet. The cause of destruction of our planet is our unkindness to our environment, to our co-inhabitants. So now we just stop that. We be kind. We be considerate. We don't have to talk about Buddha's teaching. We talk about the cause and effect scientifically. So now we found out everything that the meat industry is the one that caused our global destruction we will just have to stop it one way or another. If the governments don't do it, then we do it individually. We spread information, we encourage everyone, we inform everyone to be vegan. But please, I hope the government would please make it into law to forbid killing of animals, to forbid animal, animal livestock raising. If they are truly the leaders that pledge to protect their people, to improve their country in many aspects, then this is the first step we have to do. Stop the meat industry, stop the fish industry, stop the dairy industry. Then our planet will be the way it was and even better. This I can promise. Otherwise, the year 2012, 2013, 2014, we will never know what will happen to us if we do not do the right thing. There's only two ways to do things in our world, the correct way and the incorrect way. And right now, to save the planet, there's only one way to stop the cost, that is, the animal industry, by all means, in all aspects. Thank you, sir. That's my prediction. <laughs> we have to do it. My prediction is that we have to save the planet ourselves. Thank you, Master. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. We are deeply grateful to you, Master, and this great panel of experts for your kindly and thorough answers.
This ends the questions and answers session with Supreme Master Ching Hai and our outstanding scientists. Our heartfelt thanks to you for the enlightening questions that help us all and all people who have global viewers of Supreme Master Television to receive the beneficial understanding given. I thank you also, all of you involved, all the distinguished person who have tried their best to express their view, their knowledge, and to inform the public at large. And right now you are informing the world because we are live on the Supreme Master Television, and we will re-air this again. Just the last question of Dr. Adong, really also very thought-provoking question, and it's still lingering in my mind. So uh, in that direction, I would like to inform you something that probably you would not like to hear, but it is necessary to know before we go. You see, in the world, we have many bad news, which is not published, which is not informed by the governments or many, many governments or many medias. That is, our world's major rivers are dying. One third are gone or going. The rivers, you know, the source of our life, the water that fit us, billions of us, the major rivers are dying, going, or gone, you see. A ground water wells for three billion people are drying up as well, not just river, but ground water to make wells are dying. For three billion people, we have six billion people in this world, and the source of ground water for wells which support half of our world population are dying, drying up. And top ten global river systems drying or ebbing away. China's Sowin River, Europe Danube River, South American La Plata, North American Rio Grande, India's Ganges, the famous Ganges, the holy, the life-sustaining Ganges, Pakistan's Indus River, Africa's Nice River, and Lake Victoria, Australia's Murray Darling, Southeast Asia's uh, Mekong Lankan, China's Yangtze, etc., etc., they are dying, drying up, ebbing away, day by day. And many major lakes dry up or drying, not including dangerous side effects, such as the release CO2, methane, and other gases after they dry or while they are drying. I could list them all for you, but due to lack of time, I will give this to the Supreme Master Television to make us grow on it, and I will probably name it the Dying Water, something like that. So please look for it, for the complete list, uh, short and condensed. We can't tell them all. We just pick the major, the famous, big rivers and lakes. Uh, in... Uh, Conclusion, I can only tell you that many tens of thousands of rivers and great lakes are dying, dead, gone, or going. And I don't know how many more we must wait for to die in order for us to wake up. The leaders of the nations must do something. The people of all nations must do something. Just because we can still sit here pretty and talk, just because in our areas there is not yet water shortage or food prices gone up, 
doesn't mean it will not happen to us soon. We have to do something to avoid the tragedy that is already happening to billions of other people. There are one billion people hungry already because of climate change and short of waters and food. One billion already. And three billion people are short of water. How many more? I don't know. How many more of suffering people are we waiting before we take action? Please do it now. Just be veg. Stop the meat, dairy, fish industry. Be benevolent. Create a merciful energy that will envelop our world, that will emit mercy, love, protection for us and our children on this planet. Please take action now. Very simple. Just be veg. Just be veg is truly enough for, for now, and it will be enough for long future to come. Just be veg, so we have time to save our planet in order to implement any other green measures that we want to implement. But everything is not efficient as being veg. Just be vegan. Please be vegan. Thank you so much. May God, Buddha, the Divine Power, bless you, bless you. Thank you so much, Master. I thank you. Thank you. Good job. We would like to invite the coordinators of this conference to come forward and uh, give a few closing remarks. Beloved Master, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have learned so much about the relationship between our diet and global warming. We have also learned that the most effective way to reverse this potential catastrophe is to adopt a vegan diet. วันนี้เราได้เรียนรู้มากมายเกี่ยวกับความสัมพันธ์ระหว่างการทานอาหารของเราและภาวะโรคร้อนและเรายังได้เรียนรู้อีกว่าทางออกที่มีประสิทธิ
beautiful planet. People always ask us how they can help, and Master has given you some of those ideas. We invite you to go home today and ask your family to be vegan. We invite you to go back to your office and invite your co-workers to be vegan. We invite you to use your leadership abilities and invite all the people that you know to be vegan. And maybe you might want to go back to the villages where you were born and show them how to create veggie villages. And I'm sure you have all kinds of ideas. Just let them all soar. And remember, for great vegan recipes and the latest information on climate change, please visit www.suprememastertv.com. Your children, my children, our children will all say thank you when we save the world. They will say thanks when we restore our ocean back to the hill. 30,000 children a day don't die anymore. One billion people don't go hungry every year. We stop losing up to 270 species per day of plants, animals, and birds. The polar ice caps stop their melting, and the permafrost stop giving off dangerous methane and nitrous oxide. Our nations will live and share in harmony all the wealth that this beautiful planet has to offer. In conclusion, for this uh, climate change program, we have one last question for you. Can we save the planet? Yes, we can. All right. Together we can do it. Good evening. God bless. Be veg. Yes. Go green. Save, save the, planet. the planet. Thank you. Thank you. Tôi vô cùng xúc động và nhận thấy cái đường lối này, cái chủ trương này vô cùng quý báu, vô cùng xác thật và nó đi đúng với cái, cái tâm từ ái, từ bi, thị xã của Đạo Phật. Nãy giờ tôi ăn chay và tôi mới có cảm nghĩa rằng là ít ăn quả. Từ đó mà tôi nhận thấy rằng ăn chay là một cái điều mà rất cần thiết. Cái việc làm của sư phụ như thế này Tôi rất là tâm đắc Qua cầu gần nóng lên Từ là nguyên tắc thì tất cả những tân bang phải tan Mà phải tan thì mặt nước biển phải dắt Vua Thiện Sư Thanh Hải trong giai đoạn này Là một sứ giả à, Là một sứ giả Hay là một con người sứ mệnh Của vũ trụ, con người sứ mệnh Của Thượng Đế để thực hiện cái nhiệm vụ này Thực hiện nhiệm vụ này Để đến thức tất cả nhân loại trên trái đất này Hãy trở về với chính mình Biết mình, thương mình Và tự chăm sóc cho chính mình Chúng ta bắt đầu chúng ta làm thế nào Mà chẳng đứng lại Cái cái tình trạng là quỷ hoại của trái trái đất Chúng ta đang sống hành tinh này Đang bị ham nóng này Tiếng nói vô hình sư Thanh Hải Là tiếng nói lon tỏa nhân rộng khắp Trần khuôn vũ trụ này Đánh thức vũ trụ này Và nhận diện tất cả cây cỏ chim muôn đi vòng vật này Đều là huynh đệ anh em Một tiếng nói hết sức vô giá xin bằng phép được chúc ngày vua thiền sư thanh hải luôn đầy đủ nguồn năng lượng lớn thì vua thiền sư tiếp tục diễn tải được cái thông điệp của chính ngài đến với toàn khắp vũ trụ may mắn khi tâm được dự được buổi hòa thảo này nghe được những lời của sư phụ dạy về cách ăn ăn chay để bảo tồn để cầu sinh đẹp của chúng ta tâm chỉ nghĩ thuần tí là mình hay đọc phật tìm ăn chay để theo cái hướng dạy của phật nhưng mà lần đầu tiên thì tâm mới đến đây thì tâm nghe lời của sư phụ dạy thì tâm mới biết ý nghĩa là thêm một cái ý nghĩa là mình ăn chay thì mình có thể giúp cho cái địa cầu mình bảo tồn cái địa cầu mình mãi mãi xinh đẹp như vậy trước đây thì mình cũng có đọc sách về môi trường tìm hiểu thì mình biết đấy là ăn những cái khí CFC, khí CO2 hay là khí CH4 nhưng mà mình hoàn toàn lại không biết rằng là khí CH4 lại là một cái thủ phạm gây ra cái hiệu ứng nhà kính và cái sự nóng lên của toàn cầu lớn như thế và hơn nữa là cái nguyên nhân chính mà tạo ra cái khí CH4 đấy lại là cái thành chăn nuôi và cái công nghiệp giết mổ động vật ở trong hội thảo thì cái giải pháp lớn nhất và giải pháp mà hầu hết mọi người tập trung đấy vào là chúng ta hãy trở thành những người ăn chay và sống một cái lối sống xanh qua những cái trả lời của ngài thì mình cảm thấy đấy là 
tổng tài có một cái tình yêu sâu sắc ngô bởi vì những lần cho các loài động vật hoang dã đấy là một cái tình yêu xuất phát từ trong trái tim à, tôi nghĩ là cái cuộc hội thảo như thế này thì nó hết sức là hữu ích đối với cái vấn đề tình hình môi trường hiện tại yeah. à, đang rất là khẩn cấp con người chúng ta là sanh ra để ăn thực vật chứ không phải ăn động vật để như vậy là chúng ta ăn lộn ăn sai thức ăn như vậy nó dẫn đến một loạt các cái bệnh lý đang gia tăng trên toàn cầu nha, như là tim mạch ung thư tiểu đường loãng xương gút vân vân nha. và đồng thời nó cũng gây những cái sự tàn phá môi trường môi sinh tàn phá rừng sử dụng tài nguyên không hợp lý và đồng thời nó đi ngược lại cái bản thể của con người là đầy bị tình thương yêu chắc ẩn tôi đã được thưởng thức những cái món ăn chay rất là ngon và rất nhiều người cũng nói rằng là nếu như mà ăn chay như thế này thì tôi có thể ăn chay suốt đời được và tôi sẽ luôn luôn ghi nhớ một điều mà sư phụ đã trả lời cho tất cả quan khách ở tại hội trường đó chính là cái giải pháp để giúp cho chúng ta giữ được địa cầu xinh đẹp À, nó không hề quá khó khăn Tôi nghĩ rằng ai cũng có thể làm được Chỉ đơn giản là ăn chay, sống xanh và cứu địa cầu Thì chúng ta sẽ có được tất cả